In the name of our Lord Yahushua the Mashiach, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Kurios Yesus, we continue to correct uh, John MacArthur and Spiral Zodiatis and other, other so-called biblical experts in their uh, deception, deceiving of the church in regard to tongues, etc. We've already mentioned uh, the concept of mania above. Where does then does the confusion come from? Confusion arises from translating mania as madness or insanity since these words immediately connote pathological condition derangement raving erratic behavior. Yet mania, especially as Plato and Plutarch use the word, means a high state of emotion and comprehends all kinds of transport, enthusiasm and inspiration. If we dispose of the piteous frenzy, we dispose of our incoherent Babylon. All records of responses that mention the Pythia represent her speaking directly and clearly to the inquirer. Page 213, Fontenot. Tongues in Corinth were not imitating the Pythia. Most of the records of the responses of the Pythia represent Apollo speaking in the first person. This was a clear this was clearly a form of prophecy and its connection with tongues is in tongues being from the spirit and when in the form of prophecy but tongues far exceeds the oracle it is spoken by anyone at any time not by a certain people not by a pedia sorry on the seventh of the month it is spoken to praise as praise to God, not only as a message to people. The Pythia was asked a question, for example, how many, how may I have children? And a response may be given. Do not open the spigot of the wineskins until you reach Athens. It is true that in the New Testament we do not have examples of interpretation of tongues, but there is no indication in the records that tongues were approached were approached playing the role of an oracle at Delphi. The oracle's response to tongues was spontaneous from the beginning, with God taking the initiative. No sacrifices, no special priests, but a, a community given a gift with which to glorify God and build the church. So how can we explain the fact that the Pythian priestess gave a message that needed interpreting? For it would appear from Plutarch and other evidence that it was certainly not the unknown tongues of the Corinthians she was speaking. And the answer can be seen in the form that some of the, the oracles, Delphi and otherwise, took. In one play of Aristophanes, an oracle of a prophet is referred to. But we find that this, his whole language is about eagles, snakes, and even sausages. The oracle does not appear to make sense. However, the actors in the play begin to interpret the meaning of the oracle. One person is the eagle, another the snake, and another a sausage seller. So the whole riddle is interpreted in line with the lives of these individuals. The Sibyl. We may take more evidence from Kikoro and his D-divination. 1. 2. F. F. He gives a tradition that ten men were set aside to interpret the Sibylline verses. Since they of the divination, uh, ha, had the divination of frenzy were contained chiefly in them. And the divination of frenzy was contained chiefly in them. An example may help. Until that time he who is called Earthshaker shall break open the storehouses of the earth and destroy fenced cities. Clearly it needs to be interpreted who is called the earth shaker. So we see that actually the oracle could speak like a prophet in pictures and these ideas would need to be applied to a particular situation referred to. This application can be termed interpretation. Again, with the Sibylline oracles, we see them speaking in a language understood. The Dion Dion Dionysiac tongues in Euripides Bacchanals are the same thing. They are said to get into frenzy and to tell the future. We do not read that the Corinthian or Jerusalem church went into a violent frenzy. 
If the characteristic of Dionysiac frenzy were to tell the future, the likelihood is they spoke and were understood, again connecting with prophecy and therefore indirectly with tongues.